department chair and uh, program director. And um, so we've held this event now for, I think this is the fifth or sixth year we've done this. And it's really been a, a great event. It's an opportunity for you to get to meet some of our students, some of our alumni, some of our preceptors, um, and just get a different feel than maybe <coughs> going to kind of more traditional types of orientation. Um, so our plan for tonight is to do a welcome. We'll do our faculty introductions. Um, and then uh, we'll go through some program information and highlights, um, and then uh, certainly get through our clinical education information and highlights. And then uh, I have one kind of seated on this side of the table, um, and uh, some of our alumni as well as some preceptors. And we're going to have you guys, uh, our students, rotate around the tables at a, after about 10 minutes at each table, so you get a chance to interact with each of these students um, on a more personal type of basis. Um, they have some, some things we've asked them to be able to talk with you about, but this is a great opportunity for you to ask the students some direct questions um, in that kind of one-on-one -on -one setting. Um, and then certainly any questions you have um, can be asked throughout it, and then we'll leave uh, some time for questions at the end. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, my name is Nicole Chimera. I'm the uh, program director and department chair here. I have uh, in the Philadelphia area. I did my undergrad degree in athletic training uh, at a state school in Pennsylvania, Westchester University, and then I went on to my master's degree at Temple University. Um, and while I was there, I had a graduate assistantship where I had a position at St. Joe's University. Um, from that point, I went on and worked as a clinical athletic trainer at the University of Dayton. Um, I spent some time out at the Olympic Training Center prior to coming back to the Philadelphia area. And at that point, I really wanted to shift my direction towards teaching, and so I took a position where I was uh, half teaching, half faculty. Uh, or sorry, half faculty, half uh, clinical athletic training, and I really liked the teaching side of things. I went on to do my PhD at the University of Delaware in biomechanics and movement science, and uh, from there I took a faculty position at Northern Arizona University, and then I landed here in, in 2011, as I mentioned. Um, so I do have a lot of experience both on the clinical side as well as on the faculty side at a variety of different institutions, large and small, undergraduate, graduate, um, and it's really helped me to figure out what kind of works for me and what I really like about my position here is I have an opportunity to do research with students and that's probably one of the things I enjoy the most about my job is that research mentorship piece. Um, and so what you'll hear from each of our faculty as they introduce themselves is kind of their real areas. And, and I hope what you can take away from that is that we are really diverse and that's a really important piece when you're looking at programs is that what can the faculty bring to you as well as what, you know, what does the, the environment of the college have. So, um, I'll let our next uh, Dr. Begali go sure. and speak about her uh, experience. All right. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Begali, Becky Begali. Um, I'm actually in my first year on faculty here at um, Damon College. I'll tell you a little bit about my background as well. I actually grew up a couple hours from here in Corning, New York, and I did my undergrad in athletic training just down the road at Canisius College um, quite a while ago, and I also played women's lacrosse there. And then when I finished that position, I took a position, I was actually a fellow, it's now a residency program in athletic training up in New Hampshire, where it was a one-year position where I got to do rotations with physicians in all different areas of medicine and spend a lot of time in the operating room observing a lot of surgery. So that was a cool experience for me. When I finished that, I actually worked clinically for a few years in a hospital-based health and wellness facility where I was an athletic trainer but I also did uh, cardiac rehabilitation. So I worked with a little bit of a different population than, than just the athletes that we tend to see. After a few years working there, I returned to school at Plymouth State University in New Hampshire, and that's where I did my master's degree. I was a graduate assistant, so I worked with several of their Division III sports teams while earning my master's of science in athletic training. And then upon completion of my master's degree, I was actually an assistant athletic trainer at Skidmore College down the road on the other side of New York in Saratoga Springs, New York, and I did that for several years as well. And then I knew it was time for me to return to academia. I knew I wanted to teach and I wanted to do research and I wanted to stay in my field of athletic training. So my interest at the time after working with soccer teams for quite a number of years was in studying lower extremity biomechanics, particularly in knee injuries, because I had seen a lot of ACL injuries in my girl soccer players. And so I was able to get paired up with a faculty member down at University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and that's where I did my PhD. I finished there several years ago. Hello, I'm Lynn Matthews. Hi, God bless you. I did my undergraduate at West Virginia University where I played tennis, and we had this wonderful young lady who came and helped us when we got injured and rubbed my back. And I said, what do you do? She says, I'm a student athletic trainer. And she introduced me to athletic training. And I went down into the athletic training room of West Virginia, and I said, I love this. 
So then I applied into the program and became a certified athletic trainer. Uh, at that point, I, so I graduated a long time ago. And then I went to graduate school at Bradley University in Illinois, where I was a graduate assistant. And my job was assistant, I was certified so I could be an assistant athletic trainer and I got my master's degree in education there. And part of my assistantship I did cardiac rehab where I would run with these people three days a week at 6 a.m. who were in better shape than I was and they had just been through a cardiac rehab program. Okay, so that was that. And then um, after I got my graduate degree I went back to West Virginia and I worked in high schools as an athletic trainer and I did some teaching. And then, where did I go from there? I went to Massachusetts, and I worked as an athletic trainer in outreach program, where I worked for a sports medicine clinic, and I went to high schools. And um, I was the first female athletic trainer at this high school, and the athletic director didn't know what to do with me. And they gave me a space in the boys' locker room. That was my athletic training room. So I had to knock on the door and say, woman coming in, and the kids would all scatter, and I'd go. So that's what I did for a couple of years. And then I had a baby. And then I took off for a couple of years. And then I moved here to Buffalo. And um, I worked per diem for a Catholic health system here. I worked in high schools. I covered a little bit here, actually. Worked in um, just mostly high schools as an athletic trainer. Then I went back to school for physical therapy. I went to the University of Buffalo and got my bachelor's degree in physical therapy. And why did I do that? I don't know. No, I did it because I knew as a, as a mom, I wanted to expand myself, and so I went back and became an, a physical therapist. And then, what did I do then? And then I started working. I worked both as an athletic trainer and a physical therapist for Catholic Health. And then I went back to school and got a doctorate in physical therapy here. And while I was here taking classes, the dean of, the, of our division came into the classroom and said, Lynn, come on out. And when the dean comes in and calls you out, you think you're in trouble, like the principal calling you out of a classroom. And I'm going, oh my god, what did I do wrong? Anyway, he said, we're developing an athletic training program. I heard you're an athletic trainer. Would you like to help us? So that was in about 2008. And we worked together to develop this program. And so then I came on board full time at uh, Damon in 2010. And I've been here ever since. I'd say my specialty is um, clinical evaluation, treatment, and rehab, which are the classes that I teach and that I enjoy. And I really love working with the students, the highlight of my day. So thank you. Um, I'm Professor Rebecca Besh. Um, I guess I'll give you a little bit about my, my background. It's not quite as long. I also went to Canisius College, um, and I graduated a while ago now. I went and did graduate work for my master's degree at California University of Pennsylvania outside of Pittsburgh. I was also a graduate assistant there. I had, I think it was six collegiate sports at that time, which was Division II. After that, um, we moved to Michigan where I was in a PT clinic as an athletic trainer for about a year and then took the head athletic training position at an all boys high school for several years. I then also had some babies, moved home here to Buffalo, worked per diem as an athletic trainer for Catholic Health for many years, um, started as an adjunct here, I think it was 2006, and then started teaching full-time in 2012. Um, my position is actually a split position, so I'm half in health promotion, which is the undergrad, which is an undergrad degree, um, one of the tracks which Dr. Tamara will be telling you about on your way to the AT piece, and then I'm also in the athletic training program. Um, I'm also a strength and conditioning specialist, so I teach a lot of the health and fitness classes in health promotion, um, so I think that that's probably one of my areas of specialty. I also love working with the students. I do a lot with service with our um, department and a lot with the alumni, so I kind of think of myself as like the people getter person, so I do a lot with that. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then we have a host of adjunct faculty that we also use. Uh, some of them are our clinical athletic trainers here at the college. Um, and then we, our gross anatomy course is taught by an MD, which again, we really try to uh, hone in on people's specialty areas and have them teaching those courses because I think that gives our students really the best uh, uh, education that they can get when they leave here. 
So a bit about our program. There are two ways to come into our program. One is as a BSMS student. So this would be somebody who's in high school or somebody who's looking to transfer from another undergraduate institution. And then we have a direct entry <coughs> program. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the BS first, a little bit about the direct entry, uh, and then we'll kind of go from there. Um, the BS program, we have two ways to come into our AT program as a BS student. You can come in as a, uh, a 3 plus 2 student in the HPR, or Health Promotion Undergraduate track, or you can come in as a 3 plus 2 student through the Natural Science track. The main differences in those two is that Natural Science is a lot heavier in exactly what it sounds like. It's heavier in the science content. Um, if you're a student who thinks you might go on for um, uh, post-master's work, after you finish the athletic training degree, you're interested perhaps in a PhD or another uh, allied health field, then the natural science track might make more sense for you because it gives you more of the science prereqs you're going to need for a lot of those programs. Um, if you're a student who really has an interest in the health and wellness piece, then the health promotion undergraduate degree probably makes more sense to you, okay? Um, there are some subtle differences in the requirements as far as GPA and high school, or high school GPA and SAT scores. Um, for the HPR undergraduate degree, it's an 85 high school average and a 1030 on the SAT. For the natural science, it's a 90 high school average and a 1080 on the SAT. Um, and those are designed so that when you come in, you can get right into the science courses that we need our students to start in immediately. Um, our sciences are sequenced so that you've got to come right into um, our first bio course so that you can go from bio one to bio two and then you can go into human uh, anatomy and then human physiology. Uh, and then those set you up for the third year courses. Uh, so that is a really important piece if you're looking, if you're uh, finishing up your high school degree right now, um, you should be looking at making sure you get in the higher level sciences as well as a high of a math as you possibly can take. Okay, because those are going to be really important as you try to move forward into uh, any program that is an allied health pr program. Uh, the direct entry program is reserved for students who already have a bachelor's degree. They have a bachelor's degree, it can be in whatever it is, it doesn't matter, but there are prerequisite course requirements and those are all listed on our website. Um, what happens with the way that these two are set up is uh, at the end of year three, you would start graduate work. So at the end of the year three of the BSMS program, you go into the graduate program. And that summer, you're joined with the cohort of direct entry students. So everybody comes in at the same time. It's a May start date in the graduate program. So it's the summer, and then you go fall, spring, fall, spring. Year four of that BSMS program is primarily all graduate courses, but they are at the undergraduate tuition cost, which is a really nice benefit for anyone who's doing the three plus two uh, track, okay? Um, the way that the program is scheduled or set up for the summer is it's a, it's a nine to 12 weeks of classes in the summer, and then there is a bit of a break, and then students go into the clinical education piece. And this is a full immersion clinical education piece. So what that means is students are uh, doing their clinicals, um, however their preceptors are uh, working at their, their institution, the student is then mimicking or following with, along with that preceptor. So this is the clinical educator, it's the athletic trainer who works in the clinical setting that we have an agreement with and they oversee our students while they're there. Um, they will stay in that uh, preceptor student uh, immersion piece until our classes start, which is the Tuesday after Labor Day. So students can start their clinical immersion anywhere from August 1st to about August 15th-ish, and our clinical coordinator will talk more about that. Once we get to Labor Day and our classes start, students are in class uh, Monday through Thursday, uh, roughly in the mornings, usually done by 12 or 1, and then from there they go to their clinical education and our students can speak to some of kind of that balancing act that they're involved in right now. Um, over the winter break, there is a bit more of an immersion piece again where the students are not in class, but they are in their clinical, uh, depending on the way that their clinical is laid out. And so they, uh, they get that opportunity to be kind of more focused in that clinical piece again at that point in time. One of the big things about athletic training education is the concurrent classroom and clinical education. And that's a really important piece. Our students get the opportunity to um, practice things or learn things in the classroom setting and then they may go to their their clinical and see some of that in action that day and that really solidifies that that hands-on piece that our students need as as clinicians. Um, I'm happy to ask, answer more questions if you have specific questions about our program content. Um, what I really want to cover today are some of the more 
unique things that we do that are a little bit more isolated or specialized for our, our department. Um, we do have all of our students go to a, a specialized on-ice seminar. Uh, that's around here locally in Buffalo, and this is a picture from this year's event. And, and when they go to this event, they learn uh, their, their spine, um, spine boarding techniques for individuals in hockey equipment and on the ice. So they learn this in, in this classroom, they learn this on the field, but then when you put the dynamic of the ice in play and a hockey uniform, it's a completely different situation. So our students do go to that every year. Um, and it's a really great experience for them. Um, this past year, we had uh, one of our students compete in, in, each year we have a student compete in a quiz bowl, and it's a regional quiz bowl. So this is the EATA quiz bowl, and the, the quiz bowl itself, the top three students from each region end up competing in the national quiz bowl. And so our student last year, Caleb, uh, he did finish in the top three, and he was then uh, a competitor in the national quiz bowl, which really was a nice thing for us. He also uh, had the opportunity that he, he was awarded the uh, EATA, the Regional Scholarship, um, as well. So he, he uh, really brought a lot of um, attention for our program, which was really nice. I actually had a phone call from somebody that said, I, I hadn't heard of Damon College, but I've heard of you three times in the last week. And so this is really remarkable. And so I had to look up where you guys were. So it's really nice that we're now, we've been in, in uh, graduating students since 2012. And we're starting to get some momentum behind us. Our students are doing really well. Our success rates on the BOC exam are, are really good. Our first time pass rate for the last five years is 100%. No pressure on our students taking it next semester. Um, but we are, we are doing really well. Our students are really well prepared. We have some of our alumni here who are working locally. And I think that says volumes about the quality of our students that our preceptors are wanting to hire them. And they're wanting to hire them in this area. And then this picture over here. Uh, Danielle was a student of ours from several years ago now, but she, um, all of our students do a research project. And with that research project, they start that in uh, their second, second uh, semester of the first year, so in the spring, they start a research methods course. And then they go through research seminar one, research seminar two. And in this process, they have the opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with a faculty research mentor and develop their own independent research project in which um, they collect their own data, they analyze their own data, they write their IRB applications, so they really put a lot of effort into this. Danielle's project was accepted. She had submitted it for a presentation at our national conference a couple years ago, and she, she did. Uh, that's her poster right behind her there, and she's standing with one of our other students who happened to be there. Um, to go along with the research piece, all of our students do present their research here at Damon College during academic festival. That's something we'll hold each spring, and it's a campus-wide uh, event. So all of our uh, students who are ready to graduate will present their research at that particular event. Some other things that we do, you see these pictures over here, we do a simulation event, and this is this will be the third year we're running it. And this simulation event is designed for our students who are first year students in the AT program to be able to demonstrate their skills in an event where there's some stress and some, some pressure because that's the reality of being an athletic trainer that there could be some stress and some pressure on an emergent type of condition happening to any one of your athletes. So this is an example of they have different types of scenarios. So this one is a group scenario. This is an individual scenario. They also do a partner scenario. And who writes those? You guys? Second year the second year students actually write the <coughs> scenarios. And then they help the students, the first year students, with that scenario. And then our BSMS students are our models. So it's a really nice event where everybody is involved. And this will be the first year now that we've had BSMS students writing the questions. So they're now graduate students, but they were the first group who were the, the uh, uh, mock patients in, in those events. So this will be the first year we have kind of brought this full circle for us. And then the other thing I want to point out is the service piece that our students do. Uh, both these pictures are from international service trips. This one is Vietnam, mm -hmm. and this one is mm -hmm. Haiti. Thank you. Um, so Dr. Matthews takes students uh, internationally, and they participate in medical mission trips. Both of these were the Hope for Tomorrow Foundation trip, um, where they went and they participated in uh, surgeries and seeing patients um, alongside uh, a group of physicians from the Buffalo area. Anything else you want to say about that? We have uh, PA students from Damon that go with us, nursing students, PT students, so it's an inner collaboration. 
and then our next trip, we are you going to talk about it? Yeah, do you want to talk about it? Sure. Go ahead. So um, this year, I'm taking two students. <laughs> we have a uh, group down in Dominican Republic who does service work, and our students from Damon will go down and help out. This year I'm taking two athletic training students with me and they've been kind enough and worked very hard to create PowerPoints to teach about injury prevention to people who work with the Major League Baseball teams. So it'll be an exciting trip and that'll take place for two weeks at the end of January. So. And they're going in conjunction with um, another trip that's going and so it's an immersion piece where you spend the first week really immersed in the Dominican culture and then the second week is spent really with the service piece. So it's a really nice trip. Um, this, that, that undergraduate trip uh, that they're going in conjunction with is open for any undergraduate student to do if they wanted to. Um, and that's uh, uh, run each year. Uh, I've gone on it one time as a faculty um, mentor, but all students here at Damon College as undergraduate students have to do a service project during a semester. And so that's associated with a class. And so this happens to be the, the Dominican Republican trip happens to be something associated with a class for the undergraduate students. Oops, sorry about that. Um, the other thing to keep in line with that mission and, and uh, focus on, on service, we do have a service requirement within the graduate program. So all of our students are required to do a service event, one service event per semester during the four semesters that they're here. And during that, they do different things. We've, we've now to the point that they're pretty much set up and they, they are pretty consistent as far as what we, we do. Um, so the they, uh, breast cancer walk is one where our students go to each fall. And then we also do something with Amherst Parks as far as the cleanup. And those are the two fall options that the students have. The two spring options are the Special Olympics bowling and uh, the uh, I Love My Park event that New York State holds. Um, and so we usually go to uh, Art Park in Lewiston and help with cleanup and getting the park ready for the season. Um, so at this point, I'd like to turn it over to our clinical coordinator um, to talk about the clinical education piece. All right, thank you. So I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the clinical education piece. This is definitely something that I'm sure a lot of people have questions about. Earlier when I introduced myself and Dr. Chimera introduced myself, he said that I was the clinical education coordinator. So I wanted to just take a minute um, and just tell you a little bit about what that means, what a clinical education coordinator does. My role here is really to be the liaison between the student, our athletic training student, and the preceptor that they're going to be working with out of all of the clinical sites. All right, so the big thing is being that liaison, but I also oversee the administration of the clinical sites, the preceptors, making sure all the credentialing is in place. It's a lot of administrative duties there. But I think one of the most important things I do as a clinical education coordinator is striving every day to identify emerging opportunities, new clinical experiences for our students. I work very hard to line up new affiliation agreements so we can continue to grow and expand on the clinical sites and the placements that we're able to put students out to. When we place the students out at the clinical sites, there's a number of goals with that. The primary purpose of doing these clinical education experiences is to give the students an opportunity to apply what they're learning in the classroom. Right? We spend a lot of time in the classroom, in lecture settings, and also in lab settings, learning a lot of information, a lot of material, a lot of content, but then they need to get out into the clinical sites and be able to utilize those skills and knowledge on real patients. And so getting out in these clinical sites, they can apply their knowledge and their skills, they can grow their clinical abilities, they can get patient interaction, which is not an easy thing at first. It's something that develops over time. We develop their entry level clinical proficiency so they can become certified athletic trainers at the conclusion of this program. And one of the biggest things we do, and we strive to develop professional behavior, right? They're growing as individuals and as professionals also. So these clinical experiences help them hone in on all of those skills. The clinical education that the students experience are really housed in four practical application courses over the four primary semesters, fall, spring, fall, spring, that they're in the graduate program. There's also one additional summer option where if there was something going on the summer in between the two full years where they had an opportunity to do another clinic, um, clinical placement, they can do an optional course there. The biggest thing is when I assign these individuals to a preceptor, they're assigned to that individual and to all the responsibilities that preceptor has. So a lot of times you'll hear students say, oh, I, I worked with women's soccer, I worked with men's basketball. 
they actually, that's inappropriate. We say that they have a clinical education experience with a preceptor and they get to observe and be with them and gain clinical experience in all the avenues that they do. So usually you get to see, when you work with someone, you get to see a variety of sports, a variety of athletes, and a variety of settings. And we work really hard to make sure that we give every student a variety of opportunities that's going to fulfill what they need to be ready to be athletic trainers. All of the clinical experiences are monitored to ensure each student experiences a continuum of care in a variety of settings. All right, so as the clinical education coordinator, I have to plan and direct kind of a trajectory for each student. I work really hard to get to know the students, what their long-term goals are. I certainly want to align them with experiences that are going to help them solidify that is what they want to do. In some cases, it ends up not being what they want to do. But we also know that you don't know what you don't know. So there are certain experiences you have to have before you can truly make that decision. So with that, we have a variety of clinical placements, and we make sure that every student gets some experience within these. Some of these are dictated by our accrediting body called the CATI. Some of them are actually Damon College policies that we as faculty feel strongly that each and every student needs to experience. We do have college and university settings at all division levels, Division I, Division II, and Division III. We also have professional sports. We have several high schools. And some of the other requirements is you have to get experiences working with equipment intensive sports. You have to work with a sport that requires helmet and shoulder pads, such as hockey, football, or lacrosse, before your time here is done. So you have to do equipment intensive sports. You have to work with patients of different genders. Right? You can't spend all your time working with female teams or male teams. You have to have experience with all of the above. We also make sure that every student has an opportunity to be in a physician practice, which is one of the emergent settings in our athletic training um, discipline. We set up individual kind of assignments where they can go and they observe concussion clinics, but they also see general orthopedic when they're in those physician practice settings. And all students are required to complete a non-sport or general medical um, experience as well. This means they go into a physician practice and they experience hours with a physician where you're working with patients that are not athletes, they're not sport-related injuries, they're dealing with more general medical conditions. Because that is a big part of being an athletic trainer, is being able to identify those general medical conditions in our athletes, know how to treat, know when we need to refer. And so that's a lot of coursework we do in the program, and this Gen Med rotation allows them to utilize those skills in a clinical setting as well. Okay, oh, it double clicked here. The hours requirement for our students each semester, so you saw that the clinical education is immersed in four separate semesters in uh, practical application courses. Each semester, you have to have a minimum of 200 hours but no greater than 500 hours. And depending on what preceptor you're working with and what clinical setting you're in, sometimes you're pushing that 500 hours, sometimes you're not. But it's kind of all the ebb and flow of the program. You may be going a little bit harder one semester and then maybe it's not quite as taxing another semester. So between 200 and 500 hours. If you do the optional summer <coughs> um, semester clinical education experience, it's a minimum of 50 hours with a maximum of 200. So it's a little bit less in the summer, okay? Um, all students are required to have at least one day off per week when they're doing their clinical experience, off from all clinical um, education responsibilities. And our, our week hours go Sunday to Saturday. So at least one of those hour days, you have to be completely off from your clinical site responsibilities. We do use an online reporting system called ATRAC, and this is our way to be able to communicate between the student, the clinical education coordinator, the program director, and the preceptor that they're assigned with. We have lots of great information on there, but it's also a way to be doing evaluations and communicating and logging hours, and it's a great way that students out in the clinical sites can log their hours on their phone and be in communication that way. So that's something that you would get access to in the program. So I'm sure you're interested in hearing what some of our clinical sites are. And again, some of these are upcoming or emerging settings. We've got lots of other things in the work, but currently, where are we placing students? At the professional level, we currently place one student per year with the Buffalo Bills. This is kind of a separate application process that individuals have to go through to be selected by the athletic training staff with the Bills. And so usually going into your second year is when you would get that placement. It's a little bit more of a time-intensive placement. You're with them for a longer period of time. 
But if it fits your goals and aspirations and what you want to do long term, it's a great option for some of our students. Upcoming, the reason the asterisks are on here is the upcoming um, placements we're going to have with the Buffalo Bandits, which is a professional indoor lacrosse team, as well as the Buff Buffalo Buttes, which is a women's professional ice hockey team. All right, so we're working on those. Those should be in place fairly soon to have students there. Okay. Our collegiate settings, we have Buffalo State College. I mean, these are alphabetical order, obviously not in any particular order. Buffalo State College, Damon College, right? We have lots of preceptors and lots of clinical education opportunities here at Damon College, which are wonderful. Um, we just started placing a student at Deweyville College, so it's Division Three campus. We also have Erie Community College, Niagara University, and University at Buffalo. So we have a lot of college placements around the Buffalo area that students are able to be placed with, matched with a preceptor at these settings, and be able to experience all that they do in those settings. High schools, we currently have Grand Island High School, Niagara Falls High School. So you can see that those are a little bit further away. Um, we do prefer that students have access to a car to be able to get to their clinical uh, education sites, but we do have a number of students that if they don't, there are public transportation options as well, and so we make that work. We also have students at, with preceptors at Nichols School, at St. Joe's Collegiate Institute, as well as Sweet Home High School, all right? And that'll kind of continue to grow too as we get more preceptors on board. And we also have a variety of non-traditional physician and general medical settings, all right? So we have Excelsior Orthopedics, which is more of an emerging physician practice. We're placing a student there this winter for the first time that will be um, observing an athletic trainer who is permanently in-house as an athletic trainer with an orthopedic doctor there at Excelsior. And they will be doing um, casting and bracing and, and doing pretty much everything that that physician and that athletic trainer does. So that's kind of an emerging, emerging setting in our practice. One of the upcoming placements is with General Motors. We're also seeing that athletic trainers are starting to um, be hired more and more in industrial settings for injury prevention and for ergonomics, designing workplace settings to prevent injury and helping them rehab back from injury. So we have some athletic trainers in local settings that are going to be working with us in the near future to have students placed with them as well. Um, Harbor Center downtown and Impact Sports Performance, there's a lot of hockey that goes on down there, but they're also the ones that provide through UBMD, they provide a lot of the outreach coverage with the Buffalo Bandits, the Junior Sabres, and the Buffalo Buttes, who in the future we will hope to be working with them as well. HealthWorks Western New York is where a lot of our students do their general medical observation hours in their second year in the program, so they get to work with non-sport patients while they're there. And then Niagara Falls Memorial Medical Center and UBMD Orthopedics. And so we have a large variety of clinical sites that we're able to pair up our student. And again, they're placed with a preceptor who is an athletic trainer, and they get to experience all that that athletic trainer does. I put together just a few or pulled a few samples of trajectories that some of our students have done in the past. Typically every student gets seven or eight clinical uh, education experiences. And there's also, throughout the program, there's gonna be different immersion opportunities or one day opportunities that students take advantage of. Recently we just had, um, we hosted actually the NCAA Division II Cross Country Regional Championships here and a number of our students were able to take advantage of that one day opportunity to go get that kind of experience which you don't often get. So throughout the two years in the program people often have lots of things like that come up that you get to do one day experiences as well. So I won't read through this whole thing but an idea of a trajectory, typically this first one that you see is they've come into the program, they're either BS to MS or direct entry, and as Dr. Chimera said, in May of that first year is when you start your coursework and you do your uh, gross anatomy and your emergency care class. And then starting usually in August, end of July, early August, when preseason starts with whatever preceptor you're assigned with, you're fully immersed with them until our classes start. So whatever schedule they keep, you keep. And so usually that August placement goes through November or December whenever that preceptor's kind of wrapped up their duties, whatever they're working on, and then you rotate to the next. And so what you'll see when I go through these, I put three trajectories up here, it varies. Every student has a different opportunity. And again, we get to know the students, we get to see what preceptors they'll fit with really well, what opportunities they need to see, getting them experiences they didn't know that they may end up really liking. I always say there's a method to my madness. I'm trying to place people with opportunities that I know that they need to see. 
So you'll see a variety. This is an example of somebody who did um, experience the Buffalo Bills placement and that one individual who works with the Buffalo Bills or does a clinical education experience with them in their first year goes out for mini camp May and June and then is with them the following year for the entire football season. So that's a pretty long placement. So this trajectory looks a little bit different than somebody who wouldn't have the Bills placement. A second example is this individual did preseason likely football at Erie Community College. They have football and they have soccer. There's wonderful opportunities there with the two, two preceptors that we have there that work with our students. And then after this person completed that um, placement in November, they went to the University at Buffalo with a preceptor there who was primarily responsible for wrestling. So they got great wrestling experience with that preceptor. And at the conclusion of that, they were able to get a great opportunity with the University of Buffalo doing spring football. They went back with them with football in the fall, a great high school experience, a non-sport gen med experience, and then Damon College for spring sports with whatever preceptor they were assigned with. And I didn't put the preceptor names up here, I put in the institutions, but again, I can't stress enough, they're assigned to a preceptor, not to a sport. And the last one I put up here, this individual started their first clinical experience with preseason with a preceptor at UB that works women's soccer, okay, and then came back to Damon College in November through March. So ideally, whatever preceptor they were with there, they covered a lot of the winter sports or they got experience with a lot of the winter sports. UB spring football, Nichols School, up to Niagara University for hockey, HealthWorks, non-sport, Gen Med, and Amherst High School. So you'll see that every student has their own path and has their own trajectory. The key is that you get to work with sports teams of both genders. You have equipment intensive in there, so you worked a football, a hockey, or a lacrosse. All right, you got to work with non-sport populations, and you had a variety of settings, collegiate, high school, maybe professional, maybe physician practice. Depending on what your long-term goals are, we kind of work those things in there to get you the experiences that you need, okay? And I know we don't have time now, but certainly if anyone has any follow-up questions and I'll be around for a little bit, don't hesitate to ask me any of the clinical education questions I'd be happy to answer, okay? Does anybody have any before Do you have any we... now? Um, so next, I'd like to have an opportunity now for our students to, uh, and this picture is uh, 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 two of our students here who are practicing laser. We use code laser in our therapeutic modalities courses, and so uh, you have to wear these glasses uh, for protection of your eyes. So uh, in any case, uh, Dr. Matthews typically takes a picture of some of the students wearing these each year, so uh, this is this year's <laughs> students. <laughs> um, so what I'd like to do now is let our students uh, talk with you about their experiences. They've been assigned some talking points. Absolutely ask them any questions you have. Um, we're open for any questions. And they're going to spend about 10 minutes at each table and then they're going to rotate. So you get an opportunity to talk to each of the groups that are here. We also have um, alumni. Here's one of our alum and then there's two of our alum back there. And then we have a, a, one of our current preceptors who works here at Damon College as well. Um, so it's an opportunity to really talk to uh, students of different levels previous students that are currently working in the area as well as preceptor. So, go for it, guys. My name is Jake. I am uh, a <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, I'll just uh, uh, oh, there we go. Do you guys have any questions to Anything you curious about? I don't know if you can answer this, but she already filled out her application and sent it in. And on the application piece, it's second year. So we changed the athletic training program. So I did my undergrad. Now I'm like, do we need to go back and change that? Do you have one of those other two?
fine background. Um, swimming and mezzo basketball. I think the nice thing about the BS part is that you're getting a bachelor's in yes. kind of a nice thing. You're not just, you're not just doing a master's. You're, getting, you're doing it while you're also going through the grad I'm in the so I did Plus <laughs> um, and then I graduated in 2017. I've been out in the field now for two years. I'm just tell you about how we basically are, we have sore forces that are set on recording nights so that we have Fridays off. Like nights, but I am not going to have no last year. We set up that way so that the clinical boys can go off and travel. So I currently have a position for the first and I had the opportunity to go to Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he's a really cool opportunity that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a really cool opportunity that way. Yeah, he's a really cool opportunity that way. <laughs> yeah, I had a crazy experience at first, like, oh, we're starting to play, you know, somewhere in Ohio, which is absurd, but it's, there's nothing to school things, and I won't be like that every time, I'm not going to play it, but, yeah, you do get a lot of opportunities, you know, where you are, you don't get to travel every, every, uh, opportunity is available, and you can do it. Yeah. 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 Y
those things that are good.
uh, you can get those at the end, or you can do like on, <coughs> online quizzes, uh, online uh, journal entries, stuff like that. There's different things that are on the NAT website. Um, it's pretty easy to maintain. You just, uh, like that, the reporting year is actually this December 31st, so I'm just about to finish my last EPP hour, and I'll try to submit. It's, it's pretty easy. Uh, it's easy to maintain. I mean, also, I went to both conferences, so that covered my first four weeks. I really was only had a couple of years. So that was going to be, now it's, it's also, I have, I probably have at least 75. Yeah. Yeah. And also that well, do they let you carry over? No, they won't let you carry over. Um, just because, you know, I could, I could, be, like, I could, I could right be like 150 and yeah. oh, except for three more years, right? Or three more sessions, right? Six total years. But, uh, you know, so they, they don't want you to do that. Um, but it's, like I said, it's, it's pretty easy. There's always, like, when we sign up with the and they send out all these classes, like, just, just to make sure you know exactly, exactly. And as a member, you get, um, they give you $100 for free um, of CU credits. So you can use those credits on the AT website. That's what I do. So, those, those.
he's all like,
going through my IT class and I was trying to get an internship somewhere because I was looking for South Carolina. Yeah. South Carolina. Yeah. South Carolina. Yeah. South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. card was out there as well you can grab it um, if please help yourself there's lots of food out there if you want to grab something 
Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions, or any of us can answer any questions. Uh, we also have our graduate admissions director here, if you have any specific questions uh, in regards to admissions, that she might be able to answer. Is, is there any, are there any questions that you have that maybe the students haven't um, addressed, or you guys haven't talked about at the tables? Some music, yes. <laughs> no questions? Well, we'll be sticking around here. You can certainly continue to talk to our students. We're not rushing you out. We're happy to answer any questions if you have them, if you want to stop up here and talk with us or get some food, help yourselves. But we really appreciate you coming and taking time out of your day. Uh, and I hope uh, you, know, you learned something new about maybe outside training or at least about our program. Um, and again, please contact us if there's anything else you, you would like to know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I like the table. You like the table? Yeah. yeah.